In this video, I'll give you my top five stocks to hold forever. These are all individual companies that I've done a ton of research on and I believe can provide you with some strong returns over the long term. I won't include any index funds or ETFs because that would be too easy. All five of my picks are individual companies that I think present a good risk to reward ratio and will continue to do well in their respective industries for the long term. So if you're interested in how these five stocks can make you money, then I would encourage you to watch this video until the end. So grab yourself a drink and let's get started. What is going on my people? My name is Brian and today we are going to talk about my top five forever stocks. Now before I talk about the first stock, I should explain what I personally consider a forever stock. Or to be more specific, what would be my criteria for a forever stock? Well to be honest, I think it's impossible to pick a true forever stock because I don't believe any single company is guaranteed to be around forever. However, I would consider a forever stock to be a company that will dominate for the next 10 to 30 years. And ideally, it should have these four criteria. One, it should have a strong moat, meaning the company has a competitive advantage, which will help fend off competition and maintain profitability in the future. Two, it should be a profit machine, meaning it should be generating much more money than what it is spending. Three, it should be a market leader in the industry, meaning it has the largest market share in the industry, which allows them to affect the competitive landscape and direction the market takes. In other words, this company should set the tone for the rest of its competitors and even be considered by the market as the brand that consumers associate itself with. Four, it should be in a growing industry with a high total addressable market, or TAM for short. The total addressable market is the overall revenue opportunity available or foreseen for a specific product or service, or taking into account the future expansion scenarios. And with all these criteria in mind, I have selected five stocks that tick all these boxes and I feel will do very well in the next few decades. But of course, none of these stocks I shared today are by recommendations because I am not a financial advisor and this is not financial advice. The comments I make today are for entertainment purposes only. You should use the information I provide today as a guide only to do your own research and decide for yourself if these stocks are a buy. The first stock on my list is Disney. This is a company that I'm sure you've heard of no matter what age you are. The Walt Disney Company is a diversified global entertainment company that operates Disney theme parks, resorts, cruise lines, broadcast TV networks, content streaming and various merchandise sales. I don't know about you, but just saying the word Disney makes me feel so much nostalgia, excitement and happiness. And for this reason, I believe Disney has such a strong brand which will never go out of style. Disney's business segments can be divided into two parts. The first is the Disney media and entertainment distribution, which includes cable networks such as the Disney Channel, ESPN and National Geographic. It also includes direct-to-consumer, such as their streaming services like Disney+, Plus, ESPN+, Plus, and Hulu. The final component includes content sales and licensing, which deals with movie sales, home entertainment DVDs and Blu-rays, music distribution, and licensing of live entertainment. Overall, this segment makes up 67% of Disney's total revenue. The second part of the business is Disney Parks, Experiences and Products, which is comprised of theme parks and resorts in Florida, California, Hawaii, Paris, Hong Kong, and Shanghai. The revenue comes from selling theme park tickets, food, beverages, resort fees, and physical merchandise. This makes up 33% of the company's overall revenue. Now, if you're not familiar with the structure of the company, you may think Disney only has Mickey Mouse and other classic movies. However, they also own big brands like Marvel, Star Wars, Pixar, and The Simpsons. So they can integrate any characters from these universe into their theme parks and other merchandise products. So all those movie ticket sales for new Marvel and Star Wars movies are going straight into the pocket of Disney. The company demonstrated their resilience through the pandemic when their parks were closed for an extended period. Even though a large portion of their revenue was shut down, they managed to make some of it back through the success of Disney+. Plus. Since many people were stuck at home, there was more demand for entertainment, so a lot of people started paying for Disney Plus subscriptions. I use Disney Plus myself, and I'm very impressed by the vast array of movies and TV shows they have. Even when the world opens up, I feel there will be many people continuing their Disney Plus subscriptions, as it's quite a sticky product. Another potential future catalyst for Disney is the rise in popularity of the metaverse and NFTs. In fact, Disney has recently appointed an executive to lead their metaverse strategy. Since Disney already has many loyal fans and a large community, they are already starting to branch into NFTs, and I feel once the metaverse becomes mainstream, it is a potential goldmine for Disney. And that is why I think Disney is a forever stock. The next stock on my list requires no introduction. It is the biggest company in the world by market cap that continues to innovate, has a strong brand loyalty, and a very sticky ecosystem. Of course, I'm talking about Apple stock. Apple is a global tech company that sells smartphones, personal computers, tablets, wearables, accessories and services. They are split into two business segments, their hardware products and their business services. Their hardware products include the iPhone, Macs, MacBooks, iPads, Apple Watch and AirPods. This makes up 84% of the company's total revenue with the iPhone accounting for 58% on its own being the market leader in smartphones in the world. Their business services segment includes iCloud, Apple TV streaming, Apple Music and more recently the Apple Card. These make up 16% of Apple's total revenue. 
Although Apple is known for their hardware products, recently they have mounted a major corporate strategy to reduce its reliance on lower margin hardware products, which are showing signs of slowing growth while accelerating the growth of its services business, which will provide a more predictable recurring revenue stream as well as being a higher margin business. I personally think this would be a very wise move for Apple because there is only so many people in the world that you can sell iPhones to and once it becomes maxed out, these same people are likely to use Apple services to entertain themselves and make their lives easier. As an Apple user myself, I currently own many products and I can tell you it's very hard to escape from the ecosystem once you get in because everything just works and it works very well and to be honest, I'm quite happy to stay in the ecosystem if it makes my life easier. This is because every one of their products is very intuitive and talks to one another. In my opinion, Apple products are a joy to use. Also, their customer service, in my opinion, is world class. Anytime I have a problem, I can contact them for support and if they can't fix something, they will replace it. So if I'm buying an Apple product, I am happy to pay the premium for peace of mind that it will be a high quality product and I will be covered if anything goes wrong. In terms of future ventures, Apple are planning to launch a tap to pay feature for businesses which will allow merchants to accept payments from customers without extra hardware. This is a good move in my opinion because the last few years has accelerated the world's path into a cashless society. Also, there are rumors of an electric Apple car in the future to compete with Tesla. I'm not too sure about this one, but I would definitely love to see what they come up with if that's what they decide to do. And for all these reasons, in my opinion, Apple is a forever stock. The next stock on my list is Google. Of course, we all know what Google is and whether we like it or not, it plays a big part in our lives. The stock itself is actually called Alphabet, which is the parent company that owns a collection of different businesses with Google being the largest. The company provides a variety of software and internet related services and solutions, including web browsing and searching, cloud computing, streaming entertainment, mobile operating systems and applications, and much more. However, the largest revenue driver is advertising through the Google AdSense program. This is because Alphabet leverages its various platforms and services to generate a substantial portion of its revenue from advertising. So if you ever Googled something, let's say shoes, an algorithm will generate a list of search results. Google generates fees from advertisers when users engage with the ad in some way, such as by clicking on it or just by seeing the ad. It's no coincidence that the most recommended shoes are the big brands. And that is because advertisers also pay Google to have their pages suggested to users and will try to outbid each other for the top spot on the search result list. I believe data will become the most valuable commodity in the future in 10 years time and Google is getting stronger every day on this front. Google also owns YouTube which is where you are watching this video right now and you may have even watched an ad already. The fact that you watched that ad means you just made money for Google and their investors. I don't know about you, but I spend a lot of time watching YouTube videos because there is so much free knowledge on here and I honestly believe we are still at the early stage of its full potential. I believe in the future, social media advertising will become the norm, if not already. And every company in the world will have their own YouTube channel. The company breaks down its businesses into three segments. The first segment is Google services, which includes ads, Android Chrome, hardware, Google Map, Google Play, Search, and YouTube. This part of the business is still the bread and butter of the company, making up 92% of total revenue. The second segment is Google Cloud, which includes Google Cloud platforms and Google Workspace. This makes up 7% of its total revenue. The third segment is other bets, which includes different projects which are not individually material, such as autonomous driving. This is an area that I'm keeping an eye on because with the array of data Google has at its disposal, including Google Map, I'm interested to see if they can compete with Tesla on self-driving vehicles. And for these reasons, Google, in my opinion, is a forever stock. The next stock on my list is Amazon. Amazon is the world's largest e-commerce business, which also it provides cloud services, digital advertising, TV streaming, and various hardware products like Alexa, Kindle, and Fire TV. The reason Amazon is such an attractive company for investors is that they are the number one in e-commerce with their popular Amazon online stores, and also number one in cloud services with their web services business. These are two industries with a huge total addressable market and is expected to grow even larger in the future. And Amazon has such a big stranglehold on them. This makes Amazon almost a future-proof stock. I just can't see them slowing down in the next 10 years. And if you thought Amazon has already hit its peak growth as a company, then allow me to provide a few scary facts. One, e-commerce or online shopping only accounts for about 15% of total retail sales in the US and is expected to increase significantly in the future. We were already heading into this direction, but the pandemic has accelerated the growth and acceptance of online shopping. And number two, Amazon is now the third largest advertiser behind advertising giants Google and Facebook. Not only are they the number one for e-commerce and cloud, they also want to compete with the big boys when it comes to advertising. Even living in Australia, I personally do use Amazon a lot and I think their prime membership is very reasonably priced at $59. This proved very handy during the lockdowns caused by the pandemic. Their delivery and customer service is top notch and I've never had a problem with their delivery. This is why I like to invest in companies that I use myself because I see the quality that they provide. And you also get a prime video streaming subscription included in your prime membership. I don't have much time to watch it lately, but just browsing through, they have quite a decent selection of movies and TV shows. It's not quite as good as Netflix and Disney Plus, but hey, that means that they have more room to grow. And I have a feeling they are trying to get more into the streaming space with the acquisition of MGM, 
which is the studio behind the James Bond movies. This will give them even more options on their streaming services. This also presents an opportunity to increase subscription prices, which at the moment is peanuts when compared to Netflix. They are practically giving it away for free as a bonus to Amazon Prime membership. Also, with a very healthy balance sheet and billions in cash, the company is also getting involved in grocery stores, pharmaceuticals, and healthcare. That's right, you can actually order prescription medicine through Amazon now. There are even talks of Amazon getting into department stores with a plan to open a physical clothing store called Amazon Style. The fact that Amazon still does not pay a dividend is a sign the management team still sees the company in the growth phase. If you hold this stock long enough through its growth phase, you may even be able to enjoy them eventually paying dividends in the future. With so much diversity and multiple streams of revenue, I just can't see Amazon running out of steam in the next 10 years plus. And that is why, in my opinion, Amazon is a forever stock. The next stock on my list is Nvidia. Nvidia is the world's leading semiconductor company. They specialize in graphics processing units, also known as GPUs, which is their main source of revenue. Nvidia designs and sells GPUs for gaming, crypto mining, supercomputing, and mobile computing. They have recently become more focused on artificial intelligence, which includes self-driving vehicle softwares, robotics, and deep learning machinery. Nvidia operates through two business segments, graphics and compute and networking. Graphics includes the GE Force GPUs for gaming and computers, the GE Force gaming streaming service, and solutions for gaming platforms. It also includes the Quadro NVIDIA RTX GPUs for enterprise design, grid software for cloud-based visual and virtual computing, and automotive platforms for infotainment systems. The compute and networking segment includes NVIDIA's data center platforms, as well as systems for AI, high-performance computing, and accelerated computing. This in itself already makes NVIDIA a profit-making machine for the next 10 years, but if that was not enough, they will also play a big role in Facebook's plan to roll out the metaverse. NVIDIA's graphics processing units are the gold standard in powering virtual reality games. These GPUs will render lifelike images in the metaverse, similar to the way it works in video games. So if you invest in NVIDIA, you are getting exposure to many industries that will continue to grow in the long term, including semiconductors, artificial intelligence, gaming, autonomous vehicles, and the metaverse. And that is why, in my opinion, Nvidia is a forever stock. So there you have it folks, these are my top 5 favourite forever stocks. With the recent pullback in tech stocks, now could be a good time to consider adding some to your portfolio while the stock prices are lower than they were previously. But again, these are not buy recommendations, they are just my high level summary of why I think these companies are great and will continue to do well in the future. If you are interested in these companies, then use my notes as a guide to research them further and decide for yourself if they are a good buy. I hope you enjoyed this video and here are a few more videos that I think you will enjoy. Please give this video a like and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any future content. And until next time, my name is Brian and I hope you make a lot of money.